Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Waves here and we are going to do an update on Bitcoin where we talk about the high time frame outlook as well as the lower time frame outlook. And we try and weigh up what exactly is going on here in Bitcoin because obviously we have been absolutely flying over the last three months. We have broken through that previous all time high of 20k and we have surged all the way up to 62k. Now, en route to that destination, we have had some pretty big pullbacks. We have had that pullback in January of a 31% move down here. And then all, all the way here in February, we had that 26% pullback. Now we're seeing a pullback of 14% as it stands. Okay, so relative to the previous pullbacks, you can say that it's not been too drastic as of yet. So the big argument really is, are we about to see a bigger rollover here? Could it be a major top that we have formed? Or is this just another healthy retracement in this ongoing upward trend? In which case, how can we look to capitalize that and look for entries to the upside? So these are the main talking points in today's video. And first of all, before we dive into the TA, I want to say apologies. It's been a while since my last video. It's been about two months now, I believe. Long story short, we moved house. A lot of you will be aware that I've got a newborn baby, so that obviously adds to the difficulty level somewhat. We had a bit of a overhaul of furniture as well, so very, very big task. But glad to say we're now settling down, and um, yeah, I'm very happy to be able to come back to YouTube and update you all. So that is what we're going to be doing today. Now, obviously, during this time, I've not completely disregarded Bitcoin. I've been closely monitoring it and updating the group on a weekly basis. With regards to the group, I am doing a discount and more details on that will be revealed at the end of the video, as well as the raffle that we were previously doing. More details on that also at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's talk about the TA where we're going to go into, first of all, the higher time frame analysis. So on the higher time frame, I want to first of all talk about the BLX chart. So this obviously has the most data behind it. And so that's why we pulled this one up. Now, this is nothing new. My count all the way up to 20K here. The new bit is what is happening since then. So first of all, just a quick recap, looking at this as a wave one, two, three, four, five here. So this is your major wave one, major wave two. This was your major wave three. Now, this is where there'll be a lot of agreement with this. I know a lot of people have been having this count. I would like to adapt my analysis here. And this is what I've been updating the group on recently. And that I see this as a converging wave four triangle. We'll zoom in on the lower time frames to look at that closely. But yeah, in my opinion, this has all been very corrective, corrective wave, corrective wave, corrective wave, corrective wave, corrective wave here. There was nothing here that looks impulsive to me going up. I know a lot of people wanted to say that this was the wave four finish here. And then this was a wave one, two, three, four, five of the wave five. I don't see that, to be honest. I mean, I'm not saying we can't go higher. This is a potential topping out point at 62K, but I'm not saying we can't go higher. As I say, in these parabolic moves, you can keep getting extended waves upon waves. Okay. What it does mean is that this is a reason for caution. So I'll talk about 62K in a little bit more depth in a moment, but just wanted to run through the higher time frame analysis. This is the way I'm looking at it with this being a wave one, two, three, four, five. Now, the interesting thing about this count is we actually have a fractal of it within this price action here. So this is a one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, we've got an aggressive wave one. The wave two comes down. It looks pretty shallow, obviously, on the logarithmic scale. Again, you see the same play out here on the higher time frame. So you've got your wave one and wave two. So again, your wave two here looks pretty similar to wave two here relative to the lower degree wave one. Then, obviously, within here, you've got your aggressive wave three coming up, and then you get your wave four triangle. Okay, so again, that's in keeping with the wave four triangle here. Then you can see the wave five, which obviously looks a little bit short relative to the previous waves, though that is obviously because we're on the logarithmic scale. But you can see the similar play out here. You look, you can see a kind of short wave five here. Again, it's not short as we know. This is 20K and this is 60K. So clearly this is not a short wave, but you can see the resemblance that we're seeing in a one, two, three, four, five and a one, two, three, four, five on the higher degree, okay? So that's just one reason for caution, okay? I'm not saying we have topped out, but it's certainly a reason for caution, and I'll express why 62K is particularly significant. So just coming back to Bitcoin now, and I wanna just zoom out on the daily. Now, I had spoken 
a while ago on on YouTube and on Twitter. So about previously 40K was a target. I felt like it was gonna be a key resistance level. And obviously we had that 31% retracement around that point. Now, if we just come back to the tweets, so you can only scroll back a few tweets and you'll see it's this one here. So basically 43K was a very interesting level. There was a FIB extension there and, um, and the, uh, a FIB projection also, okay? The next level after that was, as we said, 62K. Okay, so I was warning the group, once we came into that region, that is a take profit level. There's a reason to have extreme caution because of a potential aggression amongst bears at that point, okay? And that's pretty much what played out. Obviously, we're yet to see if it is a major rejection at 62K or if it's just a temporary pullback, but it's a key level. It's a very, very key level. So this is the main fib that we need to bring on so if we bring our fib retracement tool from this high down to this low here this is what's known as a fibonacci projection so it's not a fib extension it's not a fib retracement it's a fib projection okay very very useful in forecasting potential uh uh highs so obviously we we came into the 1.382 here which is the reason for a caution around 40k and obviously we got that big pullback here but it came down in corrective, a corrective nature and we actually broke the pitchfork to the downside which invalidated the downward move telling us that we were going to push higher. And I mentioned obviously um, to the group and uh, I made people aware on YouTube was also that if we broke through 40k the next target is 62k. Obviously we fell a bit short of it here but then we came back and bounced all the way up to 62k and that is where we are. So the specific number is just is somewhere between 61 and 62K, depending on how accurately you plot your points. But you can see we have seen that rejection there. Now, is there an argument for this move here having topped out from an Elliott Wave point of view? So obviously I've mentioned already in that BLX chart how Wave 3 came up to here. Now I wanna just address this Wave 4 in a bit more detail, because obviously with this Wave 4, sorry, bear with me, we have got this kind of converging price action. Now, within a triangle, you only have to have um, the, the the parameters of the triangle tagged four times. So we've got the one, two, three, and four. Obviously, we didn't come down and test the lower trend line again, but you don't have to see that. It's a very, uh, sometimes you can get this terminal triangle within the E-wave, okay? So you can learn more about that within Mastering Elliott Wave by Glenn Neely. Uh, but yeah, I was seeing this as very much corrective through waves down. Again, for me, this was corrective going up. I know a lot of people saw it as parabolic, but for me, the wave count, the sub wave count was very corrective in nature. That's certainly corrective coming down. And for me, this was certainly corrective coming up to here. I cannot see an impulse when you look at the sub wave counts here. Cannot see anything impulsive, impulsive about this move up. And again, we saw that corrective move there also. So for me, this is a triangle. Now, that's why I've got that as wave four finishing at the end of the E wave, which is this converging uh, symmetrical triangle here. And then we've gone up, we had an initial wave one, two, and you'll see up to here, that's a 4.23 extension to the T. So a very key fib level. If we just do an extension of that wave from there to there. So if you plot them perfectly, you'll find that it comes very nicely into 4.236, where we then get our pullback, and then we start pushing higher. So if we now zoom in, there is an argument, as I say, for that being a wave one, two, three, four. So the question is now, is there an Elliott wave count to suggest that this has been a subwave five wave count for the terminal wave five up to here? Okay, so now if we zoom in on the, let's go on the four hourly. Yeah, so this was our um, wave three up to here, the wave four, which came down in a wedge. And it's interesting to look at this because we're forming a fractal of that right now. Yeah, this was a truncated wedge because obviously this low didn't come down lower than the previous low. Yeah, so we had that kind of wedge-like structure coming down like this. Typically in a wedge, this low will come down and tag the trend line again. It was truncated. You'll see on other charts, we could anticipate the upward move because, for example, Ethereum, another key benchmark within crypto, had started to make its move up after completing a very nice correction uh, but yeah, on Bitcoin, we got that kind of truncated uh, move down. 
So yes, then we broke out, retest the trend line, broke higher. Okay, so now the question is, is there a kind of a five wave count up from here? Now, as I say, I would start the count from here because it's the end of the truncated move down. So there is the argument for that being a wave one, two, three, four, and that potentially being a fifth wave up to here into that 62K level, which as I say, is a very key resistance level. Now, the good news is the retracement, what I, when price hits a key level, it's not automatically a reason to go aggressively short. It's a case of taking profits in my opinion and then waiting to watch the subsequent price action. So that is exactly what I've been doing after price has hit that 62K level. And you can see here on the hourly, we are not, it's not looking just yet as if it's collapsing, okay? For me, I'm looking at this, again, you can draw your parameters around the price action. For me, it is looking like a wedge-like structure. You can say when it came down initially, there's a questionable five wave move down, but then the bounce was very, very high. I believe it came up to around the 0.886 retracement of that move down. And then the next leg down, Yes, we took out that low, but we've got another big bounce after that. Now, as you can see, we're coming down again, and I would not be surprised for us to come and test this trend line. And personally, I don't really want to see it come down lower than the 52K level. The 52K level is an ODB that stands for oldest daily block, which is the way I like to track my support and resistance level. So going on the daily time frame, we look for the oldest block, which is right here. And this is in and around 52K. So for me, I do not want to see price come down beneath 52k. I would struggle looking for longs beneath that point. I certainly want to see price stay above there. I want to see it stay within this converging bit of price action here that is forming this wedge-like structure. Now, there's another key parameter that I'm looking at, and that is Camerula pivots. Um, so if you've been following my channel, you'll know I'm a big fan of Camarilla pivots. They work as very good support and resistance time and time again, particularly on Bitcoin on the hourly time frame. So let's just go on the hourly. And you can see here, we have been tagging the S4 time and time again. Here on the hourly time frame, this range represents one week. So for this week, I want to make sure that we stay above the S4. This is another key thing that I'm looking out for on Bitcoin. So. As you can see, see here, we've tested the S4 once and then it looks like we're going to be testing it again very, very soon. I think we will dip beneath it, uh, but I want to see us bounce at around 52K and then come back above the S4. And I want to see us close the week above the S4. That is for me to, you know, maintain that bullish stance. So for me, the way it's looking, it's looking like a wedge, okay, uh, which is forming beneath that resistance at 62K. If we can then break the wedge to the upside, so breaking above this trend line to the downside, that is a huge, huge show of strength because it basically means that we will very likely go above 62K, which is a very key level of resistance, and then push much higher, okay? But there's a few things that need to hold beforehand. As I say, we need to hold at 52K. And... Um, yeah, coming beneath that, for me, that's invalidation, and I would not be looking for any longs any lower than that, okay? Because as I say, there is the argument for this completely rolling over. Now, the, for me, a rollover in Bitcoin would probably tie in with a crash in the stocks, okay? As it stands, stock markets are still strong, still very much following their upward trends. So, yes, we, that's another supportive factor for the bulls in terms of, um, the stock market looking strong, which for me suggests that uh, Bitcoin should still be strong as it stands. So at the moment, things are, I would say, still bullish, but we're nearing that point of invalidation. As I say, I don't want to see price dip beneath 52K. Another reason why current price levels, why we're really at a pivotal level, is you'll see now when we pull up this very key pitchfork that we've been following within the group very closely, uh, over the last few weeks now and that is this pitchfork here so this is an original pitchfork so following a very steep gradient we use this low this high and this low here and we have been following this pitchfork very very nicely um, so you can see here we've it was the 1.5 line that it held as supports and you can see we've just been running into the median line then a little bit of a pause at the upper median line, test the upper warning line, back to the median line, back to the upper, upper warning line, and then we're hovering around this upper median line. 
and personally i do not like us on the other side of this upper median line i also do not like that we're struggling to get as high within the pitchfork you can see we tagged the upper warning line here and here and now we're struggling to hit it okay so it is giving that kind of divergence bearish divergence picture with a bit little bit of a loss of momentum okay so a little bit concerning as it stands you know personally i'd be more comfortable going for on longs once we get back above this upper median line so that's another key thing i'll be looking out for so i really want to see us hold i want to see a bounce at 52k i would and i want to see us stay above the s4 on the hourly camera pivots really to jump in on a long unless we see some very nice short time frame Elliott wave count off the bat off of 52k i'd probably wait for price to get above the upper median line and above that downward trend line that is holding this wedge okay so those are the things i'd be looking out for okay so although we're seeing some a dramatic move down as i speak it's still very much within the bigger structure which is this wedge so i'm not getting carried away here i'm not going to look get you know start trying to catch the bottom i'm not someone who likes to catch knives it's not the way i play it and um yeah for me i like to wait for confirmation i want to see price bounce off here and probably get into this region this intersection between the trend line and the upper median line is around 56k so really getting back up to 56k is what i'm looking for in my opinion you you're an aggressive bullish trader if you jump in at 52k yes there is support there for me I would want my insurance policy around here. This is where I get my confirmation that we're back within the upward trend. Yeah, because otherwise there's every chance we just roll over here and it could come down pretty sharp. Okay, so that is the thing to look out for. So that pretty much wraps up the TA. We've covered the higher time frame, we've covered the lower time frame, we've looked at Elliott Wave, we've looked at pitchforks, we've looked at Camarilla pivots, we've talked about the stock markets also in correlation. And so, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see how things play out. Okay, so with the TA covered, I am just going to run through now the discount that I mentioned on the course. For those that are interested, this is my educational course and the group here, Cryptology is the name of it. Um, so here I would do a weekly update on Bitcoin and the top 50 market caps. It includes all of my educational material, which is also covered in the works here. So this is the price of the works here, £399, but this is included in here on a subscription basis as long as you subscribed and the, the modules are released on a gradual basis more details on everything is within the product if you click on it you'll find all the information that is relevant um so you've got the whole curriculum of the course all the way down here it's really covering everything that i have learned in trading and as I say you also get weekly updates on um on my views on bitcoin and the top 15 market caps as well as voted charts so I will be doing a 50% discount on this and if you're interested check that out it'll be in the description to the video uh, the 50% discount is just for the first month so it's just to get a sample to see if you are interested okay and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video also we are going to run through the raffle now an important update here if you haven't noticed I did omit the introduction of the video I will also be omitting the outro of the video that nice melody that we used to listen to basically i'm trying to make the video more streamlined so i'm actually going to stop the raffle also but because you guys have been waiting so long i am this week gonna produce five winners from the comments of the last video so without further ado let's start so the url is already plugged in let's retrieve the comments there are 93 this time around so let's start and we will see our first one so there you go sally may is our first winner and second winner will be uh jbs08 and number three is simon williamson and our fourth winner uh lily hamilton and our final winner is Sally May. So 
Well done to all five of you guys. Do send me an email. My email is in the description of the video. So send me an email and I will send you your free access to the juice. So sadly, this will be the last raffle that we do. We are going to make the videos more streamlined. And the reason is I want to make the videos more action packed. Uh, so you're getting more value per unit time because I believe that is generally what the viewers want to hear. So uh, yeah, if you, I mean, if you strongly object to that, do put your comments in the video and um, and we'll reflect on that one. But without further ado, I'm going to wrap it up. So take care, guys.